Did you know that Australian Aboriginals, Papuans and Indian Andamanese Islanders are East Eurasians and descend from the same Paleolithic human lineage as do East Asians such as Japanese, Koreans and Mongolians? This might be very difficult to believe because of how different those groups look. In fact, one might say that the Andamanese Islanders in particular resemble black Africans. That is due to convergent evolution and the environment these people evolved in. In fact, early East Eurasians resembled Papuans and Andamanese Islanders in phenotype. Here is what early East Eurasians such as Tian Yuan and Ustishe Man looked like according to my trait predictor's phenotype predictor. Let's now discuss the genetic structure of East Eurasians. To study their genetics, I selected Harvard Labs 1240K plus HO dataset and ran FST statistics on some East Eurasian populations, even including Native Americans and Oceanians in my analysis. After generating the FST table, I ran it through my MagePlot tools for statistical analysis. By the way, you can purchase MagePlot for only $4 from link in the description. The 2DPCA that was generated on the basis of this FST table revealed that the East Asians all fell in a single cluster, the Australians and Papuans fell in a different cluster, and the indigenous Mexicans also fell in a distinct cluster. Nivh people of Siberia plotted between East Asians and indigenous Mexicans, but closer to East Asians. I built phylogenetic trees on the basis of this FST table, and here is the phylogenetic tree built on the basis of three principal components. Here is a tree built on the basis of five principal components, and here is a tree built on ten principal components. Let's examine the last phylogenetic tree and see what clusters are formed. Essentially, we see two major clusters. One of them includes Australians, Papuans and Mexicans, and the other includes all other East Eurasians. If we dive deeper into these clusters and separate them further, we see that the Siberians form a subcluster of their own, East Asians ranging from Tibetans to Koreans form a cluster of their own, Southeast Asians form a cluster of their own, and East Central Asians, those with European admixture, such as Kazakhs and Altaians, also form a cluster of their own. I generated a Euclidean and Manhattan distances matrix on these populations, which reveals the most divergent groups were Australians, Papuans, and Mexican natives. Out of non-Oceanian or American lineages, the Siberian Nivs, Nivs excuse me if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Nivs were the most genetically distinct. Another thing my mageplot tool does is it finds divergent lineages and models the rest of the populations using these divergent lineages as sources. This method of modeling revealed a couple of divergent groups, such as Yevinks of Siberia, Nukes of Siberia, Altaians of Siberia, Malay people, Kazakhs, Nevars, Australians, Indigenous Americans and Papuans. This model revealed that most East Asians fall on a climb from Yevink to Malay, with Chinese and Southeast Asian groups having more Malay-like ancestry and Japanese, Koreans, Tibetans and Uyghur having less Malay-like ancestry. The Tibetans are revealed to have another additional source of ancestry similar to Kazakhs, which likely indicates minor European admixture. So what do you think about this research? Any ideas on why East Asians fall on a climb from Malay to Siberian? How about ideas on the reason indigenous Americans plot so far from East Asians? Leave your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to leave a like.